Hello and welcome to Philip Brown's Computer Networking Lab. You are watching the instructional video called Creating a Simple Multi-Area OSPF Environment. In our last video, we went over the basics of OSPF using only one area called Area Zero. In this video, we will touch on how and why we might create other areas in the networking environment. The main reason why a network administrator might want to create multiple areas in his network is so that he could reduce the size of the routing table and topology database by summarizing the network in that area. Also, the smaller the database, the less CPU time is needed to recalculate the shortest path between the network when the topology changes. The OSPF command is entered in the global configuration mode so that the router will go into the router configuration mode. The main difference with using the network command is that instead of for using the area zero, you would choose the number of the area that the network is associated with. Now let's take a look at the configuration of some routers in a simple multi-area OSPF network. Here we have area zero in purple, area one in green, and we have area two in yellow. To make things easier, we have a 10.0 network for the everything in area zero. And we have a 10.1 network for every, all the networks in area two, I mean area one, and a 10.0 two network for everything in area two. Inside of area one, we have these routers right here. This is router A and we're going to be looking at its configuration and also router B, which is in area one, and also router C, which is in area two. Uh, also, we're going to take a look at the ABR, which is the area border router, which connects router 0 to router 2 and router 0 to router 1. Let's take a look at router A. We are now looking at the console of router A. We can type commands into it to find out information about its configuration. First we need to go into the privilege mode. And then we can run a show run configuration to find out its configuration. Under the router OSPF command, we can find out which network it has attached to it. Both networks are participating in area zero, noted by the area zero command at the end of the network statement. Note that all the areas in area zero we put inside of the 10.0 network. We didn't have to do that, but it's to help show which areas are in area zero. Next we'll type in the show IP route command. This will show us what networks router A knows about. First I'll highlight all the areas in area zero. And then I'll highlight all the areas in area one. And now I'll highlight the areas in area two. Here are the areas that are in area zero we have in the 10.0 network as previously stated. Notice the O 
in front of the network. This shows that it was learned by OSPF in its current area. And likewise, the C stands for connected. If OSPF finds out information from an area outside of its network, it puts an IA for inter-area OSPF. Area 1 and 2 are outside of its area, 0. So those networks are listed as IA. Now notice that if a packet needed to travel from router A to area B, it would have to go through the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. And also, if router A needed to send a packet from router A to any of the networks in area A, it would need to send the packet through the fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 interface. Now let's take a look at the configuration of router B. Now we're looking at the terminal window of router B. B is in area 1 with an IP address of 10.1. First we go into the privilege mode. And then we'll take a look at the running configuration. Note that both the directly connected networks are participating in area 1. Now let's use the show IP route command to see what routes the router knows about. These routes are in area 0. These routes are in area 1. And these routes are in area 2. Note that most of the routes in router B have a fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. This is because if a packet needs to get to a network, most of the networks are going through fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. There's only one network that's going through fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. See how all the networks seem to be going through fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 and there's only one network that's attached to 0 slash 1. And as before, the C stands for Directly Connected Networks. And the IAs refer to networks learned from areas outside of B's network. Now let's take a look at Router C. Now we're looking at the terminal window of router C. Note that router C is in area 2 with an IP address of 10.2. Now let's take a look at its running configuration.
notice that both the uh, directly connected networks are participating in area 2 with an IP address of 10.2 so that it can be easily identified. Now let's look at the routes that router C's know about. Here are the routes from area 0. And here are the routes from area 1. The remaining ones are from area 2. The two directly connected routes are highlighted by C. The areas in area 2 is, are highlighted by just an O. And ones from other routes are highlighted by O, I, A. Now let's take a look at the area border routers or ABR. Part of it is in area 0 and part of it is in area 1. It connects the two areas together. The bottom two interfaces are participating in area 0 and the interface going up is participating in area 1. Now let's take a look at the running configuration. Note this one has three network statements directly connected. The first two are participating in area 0. And the last one is participating in area 1. Now let's see what routes the router knows about by looking at the IP route command. Some of them are directly connected interfaces. Some of them are participating in OSPF in the areas of 1 and 0. The routes with IA are getting their information indirectly from area 2. In this video, we looked at the multi-area OSPF and demonstrated how it could be useful in reducing the topology database and also the time needed to recalculate the shortest path. I hope this video was informative and I thank you for viewing.